Do you want a few tips about street photography? You're in the right place. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thomas Love here from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. And today I woke up fine and dandy as I used to say, and I thought it was a good day to remove the cover from my bike and hit downtown. And so while I was cycling towards downtown because I'm in the lower mainland right now and I have a bit of a commute, I just stopped by evaluating my options because it's such a lovely day and then I remember that a few years passed ever since I wrote my book which is tell a story with street photography, street photography down to earth and so in these few years technology advanced a lot and so a few things might have changed. A few of you started recording videos instead of snapping pictures and so every time that I have a class and I'm teaching my ducklings, that's how I call them because they follow me everywhere I go in the city because they want to take the best pictures to portray what's happening in downtown Vancouver, I see that a few of those ducklings are just facing the challenge of how to use their gear to perfection because the real challenge is how to avoid motion blur or how to have a very sharp subject while the real challenge with street photography should be how to make a nice composition and a framing that tells a story. And so ever since I saw people switching to Sony or even when I saw the product test of the Leica Q3 with face detect and eye recognition and I saw plenty of people just going around basically snapping pictures of other people's lives well this is not portraying a story this is not telling any story this is just freezing a frame while someone is crossing the street so what the story here what is it interesting in there? Why should I spend some time evaluating what are the elements you put in your framing if you didn't do it on purpose? And so, step back one single time. So the starting point would be that you master your camera and you know exactly what to do and how to adjust the settings for the exposure triangle if you want to freeze, if you want to have motion blur or any other aspect you might want to consider before you press the shutter button because you can easily walk two three hours down there and press the shutter button dozens hundreds of time and then you go back home and you have to throw away throw away throw away throw away mm, this is not so bad but how many pictures are worth it your time so you come home after three hours walking and how many good stories did you tell? How many stories were you able to tell with a good narrative? So that's the real trick. That's the real challenge. And I'm showing you here a few examples because I wanted to prove my point. So I did just go around snapping pictures of other people's lives, but that's nothing special. While if you know your surroundings, if you know your city, if you know at what time going around for street photography, well, you can evaluate the options that you have and then you can put all the elements together and have a good narrative. Like I see that here downtown Vancouver, most of the times billboards, advertisements help a lot because when you have a gloomy day, and here we have many because we call it Raincouver for a reason, when you have a gloomy day and you're having a soft white light so we know hard light to help you framing towards and guiding the attention toward the main subject that you want to portray then you have to find a way around it and so the billboards or even the shop windows are an easy way to add some color and some interesting element in your framing and so fishing in those days works a bit better than hunting but I do understand the thrill on going around hunting or slightly very gently people that are walking by with an interesting t-shirt color or a nice coat or some particular boots or like here I met the Prince of Wales he was going around with his crown and despite there was no story behind it it was interesting just to take the picture of that guy because then I'm 
questioning my mind what's going on here why the prince of wales is going around downtown vancouver with no bodyguards well, of course he was not the prince but you got the point and so stay tuned because in the next few weeks i will keep going around with my ducklings i will record more pov videos to prove my point and then i will go through the book that i wrote a few years ago and then i will see chapter by chapter if everything is still valuable if there's some value added or if i have to update all of it and if i if i need to do it i will do dedicated videos for each and every chapter of that book that you can find by the way on amazon if you are interested to have a look at i did all that work back then when i was shooting still with my nikon d750 and then i went through the like a q2 phase and now i approached the lumix because i'm also recording videos and so as you can see it's an evolution of the story but the principles of photography are always the same and the more practice the better for everybody for yourself for my good self for everybody out there so this is something that will take your time you need to have dedication to photography to street photography to any kind of photography the more practice the better the results so with that i hope you got some value out of this video if you did please remember to like it share it on your social media subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos to come and i guess i will see you later thank you bye bye